when we look at the religious Islamic institutions in the West, the major ones that have the biggest following, to what extent are they actually fighting against Zionism in the past year? Uh, because we have these religious institutions. They're Sunni. And they put out a lot of content. They are funded with millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars. Um, these, some of these organizations are so wealthy that they have uh, trusts. <laughs> they have trusts that generate money on their own. Millions of dollars that they're just saving away. So some of these organizations, when you pay them $1,000, imagine, or $500, they're not using that for operations. Uh, they're not using it to pay uh, a writer or to pay a video editor or to pay a graphic designer or to pay their cost or a salary or whatever. They're saving it in a trust, a halal trust, and that trust generates, it's like an investment, it generates its own income. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that that's how much money that they have. Like it's, they're quite wealthy. Uh, so what are these organizations doing specifically when it comes to countering Zionism as an ideology? That's the question I have. Because when you look at what Zionists are doing, or even Hindu groups are doing, they are funding think tanks, they are funding political action groups, they are funding uh, institutions that are dedicated to the Zionist cause, they're building... Uh, institutions on campuses, uh, in the elite institutions, so that they can influence campuses to become more aligned with Zionism. So many different, these are all political activities that they're engaged with, all for the purpose of this uh, ideology of Zionism. Where, where is the Muslim counterpart to that? There is nothing. There is nothing. The only kind of imagination that Muslims have is that if we want to be in, involved in politics, we have to go and vote for Kamala. Or if we're not going to vote for Kamala, we have to vote for Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate. Or we don't vote at all. Like That's the extent of the understanding of politics, unfortunately, at the communal level. This is a scandal like because this is so shameful that our thinking as a community hasn't progressed beyond that. And the point that I always mention is that the minimum is being able to have one think tank, just one think tank. Do you even know what a think tank is and what a think tank does? Muslim skeptic, we're trying to develop and evolve into that. And we're facing all kinds of obstacles and ro roadblocks that we have to overcome. Uh, but it doesn't have to be us. Like, there, Why not start any other kind of think tank and build that? That is politically oriented. I gave you the diagnosis. Why? Because a, a political think tank that's truly dedicated to the cause of Islam and Muslim interest is going to be politically controversial and therefore it's going to come under heat and therefore no one wants to have that heat. They're cowardly. They're cowardly. That's my assessment. Maybe you have a different assessment of that. But Nonetheless, you have these organizations, they're well-funded, they're, they're collecting, they're vacuuming up donations from pious religious Muslims. And what have they actually done on this bigger frame to oppose this bigger ideology? You have many groups that will have uh, pro-Palestinian activism. But what does that activism actually entail? It entail it's a humanitarian type of activism, like, oh, uh, Palestinian women and children are suffering and we need to help them with aid and we need to help them and we Israel is wrong Israel shouldn't be doing this Israel is a terrorist state that's that's all it is it doesn't ex even the ones who are doing that they never extend their activism or their critique to Zionism as a whole or Judaism as a whole and the operation of these uh, lobbies specifically against Muslims and against Palestinians. You don't see that. So how can we gauge this? I had a tweet uh, several years ago um, where I, I was looking at Mufti Menk and pointing out that 
Mufti Mank, first of all, he doesn't ever or he rarely ever mentions the word Allah in his tweets. He just uses a, like the Almighty. He never uses Allah, which I thought was strange. And I got a lot of backlash for that from all these fanboys, <laughs> Mufti Mank fanboys. But then people also notice that he never says Israel. He actually never tweets about Israel or says anything about Israel. Yeah, he'll say, oh, let's make du'a for our Palestinian brothers and sisters. He'll never actually say Israel. Why? Because that's more controversial. That will generate uh, animosity. That will generate pressure that he doesn't want to deal with. So he doesn't mention it. That's Mufti Mink. But to my surprise, you also have other uh, imams who they have avoided talking about certain subjects. Now, I want you to verify this because sometimes Twitter doesn't work. Uh, their search function doesn't work. Sometimes you can't really uh, get accurate results from their search. So if we look at Omar Suleiman, his account, you if you type in from Omar Suleiman, his account, this word, Jew, there's nothing. Over the past year, in fact, over his entire Twitter career, he has never <laughs> used the word Jew. That's interesting, okay? Judaism. He's never said, use the word Judaism. Isn't that, like, strange? <laughs> like, wouldn't talking about Judaism be very relevant, given the fact that that is the religion of Benjamin Netanyahu? And that is what the Zionist state is based off of, is the religion of Judaism? Like, shouldn't there be something, like one tweet, <laughs> just one tweet on Judaism, like pointing out certain things about the religion, about Amalek, maybe? So this is, uh, I think, if I'm correct, if this Twitter search is correct, if you go to latest, sometimes top doesn't show, the top tab here doesn't show anything, but latest will have like a more comprehensive list. Shouldn't there be something on Judaism? So then Jewish, okay, Jewish, there is a tweet, but it's, it's praising, you know, Jewish film director, Sarah Friedland. But there's nothing on like Jewish prime minister, Jewish state, the Jewish state of Israel, uh, the uh, Jewish senator, the Jewish, you know, whatever. Is it strange? Like, is it? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Uh, then Zionist. Do this search and see. Maybe I'm wrong. So I'm putting that caveat there. If someone says, Daniel, you're wrong. Your search is actually incorrect. I'll correct. On the next Hayrat show that I do, I will retract and I'll correct. Oh, look at hundreds of tweets from Omar Suleiman on Zionism, on Zionists, on Judaism, on... Hundreds of tweets. I'll correct myself. But I'm specifically looking for these words. I know that he tweets on Israel. I know that he tweets on Palestine. I know he does. And he does a lot. Okay? So, and may Allah reward him for that. He does that. But look at my critique. Don't confuse my critique and say that I'm being uncharitable or unfair. I'm saying, what about the critique of the larger ideology? The larger ideology of Zionism and Zionist power, Zionist institutions, and the role of Judaism in what is happening in Palestine. Where is that kind of leadership? Where is that kind of critique? It's not found from these figures and from these popular institutions. That is my point. Not, they have the humanitarian uh, activism. Palestinians are suffering. Look at these Palestinians who are being bombed. He has that. Many. That's great. May Allah reward him and any Muslim, anyone who, even non-Muslims, who are advocating for this. That's great. But I'm, I'm talking about this other level, which is as important, if not more important. It's arguably more important to talk about the overall system to to hit the root of the issue, the root cause, the root problem. That's arguably more important to address that as opposed to the humanitarian side. The humanitarian side, even the Democrats, even Kamala Harris says that, yeah, we need to reduce the humanitarian suffering and, oh, these images are terrible. Even Kamala Harris 
And Joe Biden say that. That's many people are saying that. But what we need from people who claim to be imams and who claim to be leaders and who claim to be, you know, having these institutes, these research institutes, what we need from them is a critique of Zionism and Judaism and these political systems that are operating in the West in order to serve Israel and its uh, genocide. That's what we are missing. This is a dereliction of duty. So Zionists, there's just one tweet on Zionist. <laughs> Please, someone disprove me. He's calling this guy a Zionist shill, uh, this guy in the State Department. Okay, that's good. But literally, that's your, the only time you've used the word Zionist? Is this correct? Is this Twitter search correct? Or is there a glitch? Prove, prove that it's a glitch, and I'll rerun the search. But I think that's the only tweet that he's had on Zionist. Nothing on Zionism. Nothing on Zionism. Am I making like a mountain of a molehill here? Or is this actually scandalous? I think it's scandalous, but maybe I'm just... I'm just biased. Okay, so that, to be fair, my critiques are always honest and they're fair, inshallah. He does tweet a lot about Israel. He criticizes Israel. Israel is a terrorist state. Um, Israel has killed Palestinians. Jewish-led protests erupted. So this is the Jewish activists against Israel. So a lot against Israel. That's good. But again, it's not Israel operating by itself. Israel is operating on the basis of Judaism and Israel is operating due to the efforts of the Zionist lobby and Jewish activists in the, in the West, in America. Where is that overarching critique? It, does it exist? Because I haven't followed everything that he's put out in the past year or the past 13 months. So you can correct me. So these, this is great. This is great stuff. Allah reward him for this, critiquing of Israel. But Zionism and Zionist, Judaism, Jew, nothing. There's, there's no critique. So then, but he's not the only one. He's not the only one. Have you seen Noman Ali Khan, for example? Has Noman Ali Khan said anything against the larger Zionist system. And you can say that, oh, but he, Noman Ali Khan is only concerned about learning Arabic. <laughs> He's only concerned about Arabic in the Quran. You don't think that the Quran has anything to say about what's happening in the world right now? He applies the Quran to all kinds of situations like, oh, your family is like, you're having conflict in your family or you have conflict in your marriage or you have this or that doubt he applies the quran like that's what makes his uh, material relevant is he's taking quranic tefsir and he's applying it to everyday situations that people face what about a larger critique of zionism what about a larger critique of israel does that exist is there like even one lecture maybe there is maybe he has one lecture or one khutbah that he gets into that but that's not enough <laughs> That's my point. That's not enough. One lecture, one tweet, one article over the course of one year, that's not sufficient. That's not satisfactory. That's not meeting the need, the existential crisis that we're facing. Because even if you don't care about the Palestinians, which you claim to do, you have a lot of lip service for that in a humanitarian way. Even if you do care about the Palestinians, or you don't care about the Palestinians, what about the rest of the Ummah? Because this kind of Zionist aggression ex has its tentacles across the entire globe, as I've explained many, many times. So that is Noman Ali Khan. Let's check out some other individuals. Yasser Qadi also claims to be this intellectual, uh, mujaddid, mujtahid. <laughs> If he doesn't claim it, then his followers claim it. So 
we should see a lot of intellectual work being done on Zionism, on Judaism, etc. right? Like a sustained effort, a sustained project to counter. Do we see that? So he has some tweets on Jew. Um, let's see. This is from March, 2023. So this is not related. This is people of all faiths coming together, not related. This is from 2020, not related. 2020, not related. 2018, 2016, 2015. So the past year or since October 7th, nothing from Yasser Qadi. Okay, how about Judaism? No results. <laughs> no result on the religion of Judaism. Okay, Zionist. So is this like, look at this search. Is this like a wrong search? Like this is from October 13th, 2022. It's not even from the past year. Zionist. Is he like avoiding the subject or... Uh, yeah, maybe like he doesn't post anything on Twitter about Zionism and like everywhere else he does, but that would be surprising. Like isn't Twitter, tw Twitter is the most open platform and has the least censorship on the topic of Zionism. So in the chat, please, if the, I'm being unfair, because I know that he speaks about Palestine. Yasser Qadi speaks about Palestine. Don't say that Daniel is a liar. Daniel claimed that Yasser Qadi never said anything in support of Palestine. That's not what I'm saying. He does. May Allah reward Yasser Qadi, Omar Sulaiman, Noman Ali Khan, and other popular speakers. May Allah reward them for every tweet, every video, every statement, every article that they have said and made in support of Palestine, they will go and they will wear the kafiyah and they will go and act, be activists for Palestinians. Listen to my point. This is a humanitarian cause, a humanitarian angle that they have. And that's good. It's important. It's necessary. But it's not enough. It is not what is needed. There's an important component that's missing if you're not critiquing the overall power structure, the overall ideology. And my thesis is that they don't address it because it's politically incorrect and they will jeopardize themselves. They don't want the ADL coming after them. They don't want to lose their university positions. They don't want to be banned from traveling to the Gulf states, they don't want to face those consequences. What other explanation is there for you not to address this issue, especially if you claim to be an intellectual, especially if you claim to be having the president of a research institute that's that's my critique, you know so the no tweets that I can see when I go to latest, you go to top results, see top results in the top tab, it doesn't give you any results. I don't know why. But if you go to latest, there's nothing from 2023. What's going on here? He tweets about a lot of a lot of things. Okay, how about Zionism? Uh, okay, here we have something. October 12, 2023. Uh, the impact of Hindutva extremism in America and the globe. Also learn about the direct relationship between the BJP and Zionism Israel. Great. That is good. He has a lecture, a YouTube lecture on this. Great job. It's from October 12th, so over a year ago. I don't know what the, I haven't actually listened to it, but that's it. <laughs> then the next thing is from 2021. What does this say? Sadly, this is the real face of Zionism. Great, critiquing Zionism, but it's from 2021. So the past year, what is, there's nothing? Please correct me if I'm wrong on this. If I'm completely off base, I'll apologize. I'll retract 
in the next episode, inshallah. Uh, because I, as I said, this is just very quick research, just doing Twitter search. And sometimes the Twitter functionality is not operating correctly. But from what I can tell, from what I can see, the Twitter search is functioning and there's just no results coming up. Now, how about Zaytuna College? Another one of these institutions that gets millions of dollars every year, tens of millions of dollars every year from the Muslim community. Do we have anything on Zionism? <laughs> no, nothing. We're talking about like these elite institutions like Harvard having protests, campus protests uh, in support of Palestine. Where's the campus protests on Zaytuna's campus? Maybe they do have protests, but isn't it a Muslim college? Like, shouldn't the entire university be dedicated to this issue? But nothing. They haven't. Their official account, Zaytuna College account, zero tweets on Zionism. Zero tweets on Zionist. Zero, oh, on Israel, okay? Two tweets on, on Israel. One is from 20, or both of them are from 2015. The end of the two-state framework will move Israel solidly into either a full-fledged apartheid state or I guess it was a Facebook post. That's the only thing that they have from 2015, about a decade ago. Then Zaytuna College Palestine. What have they said about Palestine? The <laughs> tweets from 2016. And they're all from like Dr. Hatem Bezian, who I who is Palestinian himself, and even then, even then, the it's from eight years ago. Is isn't this a scandal? Isn't this shocking? I mean, then you have like Yaqeen Institute, your credible source on contemporary Islamic topics. Yeah, I'm sure. So, what are they talking about when it comes to Palestine? They have articles. They have articles on Palestine, but. Again, it's it's humanitarian, it's within a completely left-wing liberal frame, and they don't even go as far as some of these left-wing act activists. You have left-wing activists that will criticize Judaism, that will criticize Zionism on that level, will criticize the Israeli lobby. They'll use the word Zionism. There are left-wing activists, but yeah, but again, these are all humanitarian not like you're a research institute, right? Can we have an article on how Judaism is affecting the current genocide? It's just critiques of Israel as violating humanitarianism. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is something here that goes beyond that. Um... You know, Qalam Institute, another one of these organizations, their homepage. I'm sure like they have speakers that will talk about the humanitarian aspect. But when you're getting funded with millions of dollars, that's not enough. It just doesn't cut it. Al Maghreb pretty much defunct at this point, <laughs> but also nothing on their homepage. Yeah, so am I going am I being fair or am I just unfair? I'm just a hater. <laughs> I'm just jealous. I'm a hater and so I've blind I've been blinded from all of the stuff that they're doing for Palestine and I'm just a hater. No, I didn't say that they're doing nothing for Palestine, but what they're doing is not meeting the need of the hour. And when you claim to be the leader of the Muslim community, when you claim and to be uh, at, at the front of the charge and you're collecting millions of dollars from the Muslim community, you're not doing what is required. You're not doing what is necessary to actually create a political agenda that will challenge intellectually and politically Zionism and its hold in the Western world. That's what you're not doing. And my suspicion is that you're not doing it because it's politically incorrect. 
It's It comes with political backlash. It comes with political consequence. And you will lose the access that you've been enjoying. You can have a lot of access and be a humanitarian and be a pro-Palestinian humanitarian. There's a lot of opportunities that are open for you in academia, even with the media. I mean, those opportunities might get less and less as Zionist, this Zionist lobby clamps down further and further. But you're not going to get canceled by critiquing uh, the humanitarian disaster in Gaza. You will be canceled if you say that, what, look at what the Talmud is teaching. <laughs> you, will get, you will lose your uh, professorship. You will lose your uh, media access. You will lose that cushy position that you have as a chaplain. Uh, they're not, so that's, this is kind of deceptive that you portray yourself to the Muslim community as a champion of the Palestinian cause when you're actually not, you're censoring yourself from saying critical, crucial things that need to be said. You're not even tweeting about it, let alone dedicating some of the millions of dollars that you're vacuuming up from the Muslim community towards a larger project, a larger campaign, a larger think tank effort. 